Oh, that's okay. We're ready? Good. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled Board of Finance meeting for Monday, September 19th, 2016 to order. First order of business is public forum. Is there anyone wishing to address the board in public forum? Hearing none, uh, let's move on to the uh, balance of the agenda. However, our, uh, we were just given uh, a document that I'd like to uh, add to the agenda as item 6A. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion carries. Uh, item two, uh, approve the minutes, the regular meeting minutes of August 15th, 2016. Uh, comments, questions, changes, deletions, whatever. Ken. Yeah, uh, page four, item five, where the board was going to have a special meeting to handle the transfers, which was subsequently postponed to tonight's meeting. Right. Perhaps we should add that to the minutes to make them complete. Um, the board decided to have a special meeting Right. And it's kind of hanging there. Subsequently, well, this, I don't uh, think we, I don't think it happened after the meeting. Yeah, uh, it happened after the meeting. So, so you, you use the word subsequently. You can't, but you, you can't, can't relate it to the meeting. No, you meeting. can't okay. amend it. Okay. You okay. can't amend it you in that fashion. You make note of it today. So okay, very good. It'll be in next month's meetings. Okay. All right. Uh, any others? I had another one on that. We did, did anybody get the. Update on that dedicated uh, road, road fund. fund. No, I had that uh, highlighted as well. Tracy, could you take that back to uh, to Linda as an action item, please? Well, I, I happened to find in my files the dedicated road. <laughs> it's amazing. I was about to throw that. You out never throw anything. Uh, the dedicated road fund update of June thirtieth, twenty fourteen, right. where it had the number of uh, unreserved eight hundred and twenty thousand. So that's the last thing we've ever heard. That was 2014, and I know there have been some activity in yeah. uh, and out of that account. So, but, uh, I have a couple of questions. I don't know whether it doesn't affect the minutes themselves. Should I bring that up in new business or old business? Or yeah, let's let's handle it. Comments. Let's handle it now. Unless there's there's nobody here to answer the questions for you. And if you want to, well, Joe's probably one of the questions. Yeah. Mike might be able to the other. Let's, the other. Do, let's handle the ones we can. Um, so six, on page 7, 6.1, report on Guilford High School Building Committee. Um, there will be another 500000 bill for ONG Fusco in September, and that should be the final one. We keep, you know, Mr. Gamerman keeps asking how much we owe ONG and Fusco, and I, the second part of the question is under new business in line 8, we talked about the um, bond issuance so far. The first round was 26 million for the school. The second round was 15 million. Oh, here's Joe. Good. The third round was 15.6 million. Uh, and then in the last sentence, it said Mr. Mazza said there is still seven million left to bond if needed. But according to the building committee, they might not need it at all. So the not two questions not, might not need it all. Might not no. need it all. Right. Did I say it at all? Yeah. Yeah. Might not need it all. Right. right. So all, my my questions. So the two questions I have are, Mr. Gammerman again keeps asking how much we still owe O and G, and so at some point, I mean, is this is this the final one? It said it should be the final one. When when are we done paying O and G? I was going by the August meeting that I had attended, and in the notes that I took and what I reported that there was a was a payment that in our August meeting. And then that there would be probably another $500,000 invoice coming from ONG uh, this month, which I didn't see, by the way. So it probably will come next month. I, I just that, don't understand the that probably because we sort of know how much we are expected to pay them. So probably 500000 plus is a fair amount of money. So, so the probably is where I get a little confused. You okay. know, I'd like to know how much we, again, and Mr. Gammerman has been pushing it every meeting for months. We should know, I think, how much we are going to pay ONG. And, I, and I'm not, I know I'm laying this on you and it's not you necessarily, no, but I think we are entitled and the public's entitled to know how much more we are going to pay them. And are we done? I don't know exact amounts. I know that the $500,000 bill was the one that would be the final payment. And, and then the as other- As far as retainage goes, I'm, I'm not sure what the retainage amount is, if there is one. Um, so it's, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be much more, if at all, over five hundred thousand dollars. It could be five fifty-two. It could be—I don't know what, what the number is going to be. 
Yeah, but, but, uh, Mr. So, could but is me. that can are you even in a position? Are you able to say that that's the last one, or are we going to? Is there a five hundred more behind it, or a million behind it? I, I, I just I don't understand where the guarantee. where these bills keep be coming from. The building committee said so. I leave it to the building committee as far as what that what that final bill is, what the amount is, and if there's something that comes after that. And and that's along and along the same vein, the seven million left to bond if needed. Are, do we really have that much? more to do on the school We've, it's been open for over a year do we really have seven million dollars worth of expenses left on the school and I, you know i'm not do you know the answer to that joe do we know realistically it seems unlikely to me that we're that we could possibly have to spend an additional seven million dollars on the no, school it's not a matter of, of spending an additional seven million dollars it's a matter of how much we're going to get back from the state and, right. and uh, uh, number one, and uh, number two, how much we've already spent out of uh, cash flow that we have to recoup. Okay. So I don't know until the billing committee gives us a final account. It's about the because audit. It's also about the audit. Right. And so the, the, the initial, audit, the initial, on the our initial nut. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe was 63-ish million and. We bonded, 54. okay, and we bonded 56, which leaves eight instead of seven left for, um, for us. And our 64 was after full reimbursement from the state, and the state reimbursement is predicated on a satisfactory audit come completion of the project. So I, I recognize there might be a need for that. So the, the seven or eight that we're talking about still, though, is what we originally thought we as the town, the taxpayer, were going to have to put into the project after getting fully reimbursed from the state. So I, again, my, my question is, I, I, I don't see how it's possible that we could still have $7 million in outstanding invoices. Like I say, the school's been open a year. Is there, it, it's, it we don't, seems, we, I don't believe I don't, we have $7 million in invoices. I believe we also have bans uh, that, that we uh, will be rolling over to final bonds. That's correct. In, in addition yeah. to the cash flow that we've used from the, fund balance. The $7 million is already out in advance. Thank you for bringing that up. Right. Okay. So that seven million could be turned into bonds if we need it. No, no. Is is that the face amount of the band seven? Okay. Sort of is. So the first, the other part then. So that answers that. The O and G issue is still. Sort of a, the ongoing. ONG is, nearly, ONG is nearly complete. They, they, they're, for all intents and purposes, complete. Um, anything that is, needs to be done at this point is warranty work. For example, the plantings that I told you about last right. month that if something needs to be replaced, it's within the warranty period. Um, but they're, I mean, they're off site, they're, they're done. Uh, I can't imagine anything beyond that five hundred thousand dollar bill, but I also am not the ruling committee, right. and they did not. They did not have. I do not believe they held a regular meeting this month. Um, Dr. Freeman could confirm that because I know you go to just about all the meetings. There was a special meeting, but it was a um, an item that was just a like a, a one off item that yeah, we addressed. Special meeting last week on a one off item. Yeah. I have not attended a regular meeting this month, and I don't believe I missed one. Yeah, I don't think they're going to have one. Okay. Mike, they, they Mike, probably will have one. So. Mike, maybe you can help me out. Uh, how is ONG, what, what's the structure of how ONG is paid? Was it a flat fee for the project or is it a percentage of what was spent? Fixed fee. It was a fixed fee. Yeah. So, so we should be able to, I, I agree with your point, we should be able to ask somebody, uh, how much have we paid them so far against, against what we contracted to pay them? Plus, any change orders or any, any would change orders affect their fee? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's not quite as simple as we contracted for, you know, with ONG sixty sixty million dollars of that sixty four million dollars. We paid them sixty three five or sixty fifty nine five, and we owe them five hundred. So there are some things that come into play that changes that number. So it's not as simple as saying we contracted for X, we've already spent Y, 
and then Z is the difference that we're supposed to make. That's a difficult number to get to is what you're telling me? What I, what I can tell you is there's a payment requisition for a certain amount, and I don't exactly remember that amount, uh, 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 the, the exact amount of, of right. that construction cost, right. because then it went up because of change orders. Right. Um, that, that amount, but that comes out of contingency. So that was all factored in, whatever the change orders are, they get added onto the base amount of the fixed fee. Um, that $500,000 is what's left in their payment requisitions. So if the amount is, let's just say, hypothetically, $73 million, they're with change orders, and it was a, a certain amount before base plus change orders of seventy-three. they have $500,000 left of the $73 million to get paid, and that's it. All right. And then they're done. So there's no accrue, you know, there's, no, there's nothing that's being added to the project because they've already addressed it with the base and the change orders okay. that have already been addressed. And there is a payment requisition that I remember that was handed out to the building committee in August. Uh, I did not get a copy of that. There was only so many copies of the stack of 90 some odd pages. But I'm sure the building committee would be more than willing to provide that information if we wanted it. Okay. But there is a payment requisition out there for an amount that is right. um, Because both Ken uh, and Ken, Ken Square have been asking this question for a while, I'm going to reach out to the uh, standing building committee. Uh, or the chairman of the building committee and ask if it is as simple as yeah, the high school building committee rather than the standing building committee, the GHSBC. And that would be Barbara Casey. And that's Barbara Casey. And I'll reach out and see if, if we can get an accounting of what is owed to uh, ONG. Well, the only thing, that, that's fine, although Barbara might refer you to uh, Bill Mulligan. That's and fine. Bill is the one who's been the... Uh, the payment, the, 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 fi the finance, finance guy? chair. Yeah, of the, of the I think it's appropriate to go to the chair, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But I think you'll you'll probably go to her. That's fine. I'll, I'll be happy to take that. Out. Okay. <clears throat> Others on uh, the minutes. I, I have one item on page three, and it was a follow up regarding the uh, outplace special education student projections, which we requested, and Linda did respond back with answers to a lot of our questions from last time, but there was that one you were still waiting on an answer. Do you have that yet? It, you were getting it from Pupil Services, I think? Right. I actually got the information from them Friday afternoon, this past Friday. So, um, we currently have 26 outpaced students in the, is there anything to make better by that? 26 students in just the private tuition line. I know you only see one tuition line. And I don't have the total of the public tuition. I'll get it to you tomorrow. I'll get that's, you fine. Better that, that's tomorrow. fine. That's fine. If that's okay. Absolutely. When you say public, is that the VOAG and the magnet? Is that when you throw that additional in there? Is that yeah. It's the VOAG, um, the ACES programs. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, we'll have some follow-up questions on that a little bit later. The tuition line item, I'm right. sure. Right. right. Yep. Any, anything else for anybody? Move their acceptance. Uh, Second. Follow-up question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Excuses? No. Thank you. Uh, item three: Correspondence, three point one, Standing Building Committee minutes. Um, I have forwarded August to everyone. Uh, Mr. Gammerman had called me about a question or two, which I believe I had answered right before the Standing Building Committee. That was that night. Right. Um, I did attend it. The September 1 finally I was able to make one. And we have the minutes in hand from September. It's a draft. Uh, I'm sure they would want everyone here to know it's a draft. <laughs> um, because it maybe went out a little earlier than the chairman would have liked. Mm -hmm. But um, they know that we are eager to get them in our packages. So um, I think what I'll do is, since we have the minutes, and I don't really have to relay that. No, anything, that's fine. We'll just ask questions. You can just ask questions, yeah, you if that. anything comes up. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Um, since it came up in two successive months, I had in the August and September minutes, what is the, how critical is this concrete issue? I mean, they're talking about possibly doing it, doing the repairs during the current school year. Is this something that is uh, 
vital to the safety of the kids no. or the operation of the building or no uh, it, it is simply uh, from my understanding it, it's a foundation wall but it's simply a retaining wall it's on the site it's not holding up the building it's just basically a, a, a wall with no there are no, no, safe, no safety issues involved the, the see if I can paraphrase this as quickly as possible it's not a structural wall the concrete was poured and honestly, you know, the, the contractor took their chances that, that some tests that they did on the concrete uh, did not pass. That should have been a, a, a red flag, but they decided to hope that the other tests that came back with the concrete were going to be in their favor. And nothing came back in their favor. And now they're on the hook for it. So they have to do any replacement or any remediation at their own cost. Um, it is not, it is co a code issue. But it is not a safety issue. Now, the difference being that code is, you know, there's a lot of things that don't meet code now, but they're not a safety issue. This is not the concrete wall holding up the building. building it's it's a literally up against the sidewalk. And so what they're going to do from the, the items in here, if you read um, into it, they're going to tear back some of the sidewalk. And it, we're talking about like 30 or 40 feet of sidewalk. They're going to take a little bit of the sidewalk out, remediate the wall, build it up. More at their cost. And then, at their cost, and then they're going to put the sidewalk back. That was the detail that I saw at the standing building committee meeting. Okay. And it's really just, the building committee can't accept it if it doesn't meet code. No question. That's but right. we are not paying for anything that is being done to remediate that issue. And, and it is not going to be done during the school year. Okay. It will be done during the summer. summer. Because by taking that sidewalk up, puts create a problem. It was a, it was a suggestion by one of the building uh, committee members to, to do it, you know, do it on double time and do all that. And it's it doesn't raise itself to the level to that level of right. yeah, so it could be done in April or the summer when there's a, a good period of time off. Good. I had a quick question, Mike. Uh, the, the update on Baldwin Middle School windows and door project. Um, the good news is uh, test windows on the north uh, east stairwell came back with uh, no asbestos found. Uh, would that be isolated, or is there a possibility they're going to find it elsewhere? There's always a possibility they could find it elsewhere, but that is a really That's good, really good sign. Okay. Yeah. Good. Should I just follow up on that? I, I do believe that they did test in other locations, but that was one that they did not do a test at, and they wanted to check it. So is there any more testing that they're planning on doing, or is, as far as you're aware? Or? As far as I'm aware, no. Okay. But... Um, you know, unless you test every single window, right. you never know. But there's no, there's no concern that it no. might be in other areas. Well, no, no, there's not concern, but could it be found? Yes, sure. Could be. For some unique reason. That's why we have contingencies, right? That's why. Right. And that might be bid out as two phases. There's a lot of work to be done in that project. So okay. it might be done over uh, two summers. Anything else? I had one on the full replacement. Um, if you go to the very end of the report on item 13 on their approval of uh, warrants, I guess, that uh, they've approved $190,000 or 53% comple completion of the pole replacement. Mm -hmm. And that adds up to like $380,000 in mm -hmm. that project. What was the original uh, estimate on that? Anyone know? Because I think we're quite well, a bit first over. No, the, the first one was two fifty, and then they raised it to three fifty. I think right. is what they right. raised it to. Right. It was it, the estimate we first got was because they had about I, I think Cliff had about two days to come up with an estimate prior to coming before us with capital projects and what was going to go in the budget, what was going to be. Bond. So it, it was so just done a little. It, it was done very early. quickly, just as a, a, a real high-level estimate when we got the 250. And then when we really got into it and the amount of work that had to get done, I think it did go to 350. And then when it was finally bid out, it went to three. I think it was like 370 or 380. I see. So it's and that, that was the number. Okay. So, yeah, your numbers are, are correct in the percentage, so you, what it is now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can attest to that the, they're operational already. So uh, <laughs> whether we pay 53% or not, it looks like there's 100% completion in terms of the construction. So. Well, I remember this was September 6th, and there were some punch list items and some other things, but yeah. they were just, I think there was some adjusting that they had to do with the lighting levels at the field. And they've, I'm sure at this point with the games going on there, they By the so. ninth, I think it was ready. Yeah. yeah. The lights are off. Yeah. 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 Good job. Well, what was the life expectancy for these? Do you know? 
Uh, I want to say 20, is it 20, 25 year warranty on the lights, right, Ted? Yeah. The lights or the poles? Ted, Ted attends all the building committee meetings, more years so than I do. So sometimes I look at Ted, I'm like, what, what so is there's, it, Ted? There's two components. One is the pole itself, yeah, which is what forced us to replace the it. The poles are, are probably good for you know, 30 to 50 years. Yeah, they're not the lights. lights. These are lights metal poles. These, yeah. these poles yeah. are going to last. These are not the wood poles that we put in. Right. The yeah. lights themselves are warranted for 20 to 25 years. I have a question on number 10, which will save me asking the question later because I was going to ask it later anyway. Um, update on performance contracting. In response to a question, Mr. Gurnham explained that the source of the large electric bill at school facilities is due to the addition of air conditioning and a fresh air system. The trade-off for the additional cost is improved comfort for our staff and students. Um, in looking through the, the Eversource bills this month, versus May last year. I, I recognize that the schools probably run the air conditioners in the summertime, but we spent a lot more, I think it's 15,000 at the high school versus 13, and five or 6,000 at, at Jones and Wheat and Adams and Cox versus four or 5,000 back in May. So the kids were in school in May, and the Eversource bills were significantly lower for the month of May than they were for the month that we're getting here now, which I think is half July, half August. Um, so I, I guess I'm, I'm not aware that the schools are being used as actively as they are in May. If they are, then I think that answers the question. If they aren't, then I'm a little surprised that we'd be running AC constantly and running up these kind of, uh, I'm assuming it's all AC, uh, running up these kind of utility bills in the, in the middle of the summer when we're vacant. Well, there's, there's a couple of factors here. One, the, the degree days in July and August this year were significantly higher than they would have been in May. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, Agreed. 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 Um, and while the, the schools were not in, in session, um, I don't think it's, it's considered to be good policy to run the school and let the temperature inside and the humidity get up to 100%. You know, mold and all kind of stuff like that. So you have to keep the temperature down to a certain degree, and more importantly, you have to keep the humidity down to a certain amount so that you don't get these other health hazards out. And we just had a real hot summer. That's the answer. That's the answer. It seems. Uh It seems what? It seems it seems like a lot. I you know I, I appreciate the fact you need to keep it mm -hmm. cool and keep the humidity down. Um, but it's sort of when you go into malls and go shopping, places tend to keep the AC running cooler than is necessary. I didn't go into the schools in the summer. At least I don't recall going in. So um, I don't know how whether they were overly cool or not. The the one thing to keep in mind is that. It is clear that the Eversource bills and the high, the high school, what the high school is using now is much different than it used before. And we all knew that when the school was built that it was going to be, it was going to be an electrical draw. But it's also, you know, it is a comfort issue. Yeah. But if you look at the percentages, so, if you look at across all the schools, the percentages are pretty dramatic at all. I, if it were just the high school, you know, maybe I'd, but it's across the board and I'm sure that some of the schools were. Um, in some of the schools, I don't think we need to worry. You know, a lot of these schools never had air conditioning, so yeah, I think you could keep them slightly set a little warmer than perhaps they were. I don't know. But I just noticed. Well, that. I, I, I would go back to the point that the degree days in. No, and I, 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 I know it was hot. They were very nice. And they were much higher than they were. I just hope we don't end up paying performance contracting to tell us that we should keep our temperature, our thermostats <laughs> at a different thing and give them a percentage of the savings because well, they, they point out the obvious. Well, we, 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 we don't give them a percentage of the savings, but um, one of the things that we are asking them to do, particularly with the high school, is to optimize the way the uh, air handling systems are, are operating. 
In other words, the relationship between the various thermostats and, and you know and the timing and all this. And remember that the schools knew, and that we're still working through um, ways of, of getting the energy use in that high school down. Uh, and I think there's at least uh, I don't know another year before we'll have a real good handle on what we can do there. But some of these, you know, once we select one of these firms, uh, they really are expert at, at doing that, and they could help us fine tune this thing. And I think that that will result in some savings. I don't think it's just turning down the temperature. I think it has to do with how the whole system works and the energy balances and stuff like that. It's also worth noting that none of our buildings do go offline in the summer. Uh, we're obviously much less populated across the summer months, but we offer extended school year for students with special needs. We offer reading camp every summer. Uh, we offer Title I remedial uh, uh, classes this summer. Um, we have student athletes who continue to access the high school all through the summer months. And we have uh, maintenance, custodial, clerical, and administrative staff who work a full 12 month school year in all of the buildings and teachers who while they are not under contract do make use of the buildings across the summer. Uh, we have uh, interviews and hiring that's taking place, new teacher orientation and administrative retreat. Um, so they're obviously much less populated. We don't fill every classroom, but all of our buildings are open for business and open to the public across the summer. I would just add a couple of comments. One being, I, I appreciate the comparison to between uh, the, the summer months and May. I think probably a better analysis would be what we do last year during those same months. And uh, I don't have the full command of what the total appropriations were, but last year at this time we had expended 14.64% uh, of our electricity budget for the, for the schools. And this year it's 518 so it's less a percentage of the total expenditure uh, appropriated this year by a significant uh, factor. So I guess a, there's a, a various kinds of comparisons you could probably do. Mm -hmm. And again, notwithstanding, I don't know what the degree gays were last August and July, but I remember them being pretty hot too. Um, I think this was hot. This was hot. Anything else? On standing building? Standing building. Yeah, I actually building. had one one point from the August minutes again. Uh, item 7, the update on uh, 595 New England Road. And Mr. Grenham noted that the work is complete. And my question is, is does this now turn over responsibility for what we call the fitness center to the town? Mm -hmm. it's so been, the, it's been the, the, the Board of Ed's responsibilities here are... Or yeah, completed. The, the town uh, through the park rec did use it for some, some programs. Okay. But right now the uh, phys ed department is using it extensively, but through uh, approval of the park and rec department. And whose who's financial responsibility is it? Which uh, town? Is right it? now it's the town's. Yeah. We're paying all the utility bills on that. Any further? We'll move on to 3.2 pension committee minutes. I have one down. Yeah. Um, that's all under here. There's the, the bottom uh, under three of the finance director's report. There was a question regarding the uh, actual report. contribution that was made. Yes. Versus the actuarial recommendations if there's some it's just a question in here and uh so these were just a few, well a month ago so what's the what's the what was the answer to that question there was a 1.4 million dollar actual contribution versus a 2.1 million dollar recommendation the 2.1 million dollars was contributed the 1.4 uh was an error in reading the report but the 2.1 is what was contributed Okay, that's a good answer. <laughs> Check. Um, on page six, pension report. Um, after uh, the Wells Fargo performance evaluation report, uh, it says a question was raised that wage increases should be a concern. Uh, 
Tom Devona to provide analysis. Have you got page? Oh, not page six. I'm sorry. Page three, item six. Yeah. I get a special report. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the question was raised if wage increases should be a concern. I thought wage increases were part of the actuarial considerations. They are. They okay. Are. They are. Okay. They're not normally looked at when you're looking at the investment side. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Because actually, didn't we have them go back and look at the assumptions yeah, they were we making? We calculated like, with our actual because yeah. yeah. they were using what a four uh, percent yeah, anticipated correct. rate for yeah. a long time okay we just wanted to make sure recalculated right. anything else on pension i have one question on page four uh <laughs> on the town of guilford's pension plan performance summary uh i would appreciate some explanation or clarification of these terms the final bullet Inception fund performance is 8.9% against a policy of 7.1%. I'm a little uncertain as to what that means. The policy is there's a guideline. Um, each one of these has a, a, a specific investment characteristic. And so the, what they do is they benchmark it. It's a benchmark against, you know, it's a certain percent bonds, a certain percent of this index, and certain percent of that index. So that's what they're talking about. Talking about a benchmark. Blended yes. benchmark, basically. So, so we, blended we exceeded the benchmark. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Anything else on pension? Well, let's move on to item four. It will be to review and accept the report of expenditures of the Board of Education for August 2016. Linda and Ted, you want to come up, and then uh, the uh, our superintendent would like to address us uh, after we go through the numbers. Is that okay? Anything you'd like to bring to our attention? Well, it was certainly a uh, frugal month for the board uh, since we weren't uh, school was not in session. Um, if you look at our uh, payrolls, for example, uh, they uh, look like they're missing a digit. But uh, that's because uh, the, uh, the, the teachers weren't there. Uh, the expenditures for the month of August were uh, $2,010,158.10. Uh, expenditures and encumbrances through the end of August were 9.17% of budget as compared to 9.88% of budget in the prior year. Uh, basically, I would suggest to you that the difference here is almost entirely due to timing of uh, certain payments. Um, it, uh, I, would, I, would not, uh, I would not infer a trend from this one month. That's a pretty good, pretty good assumption. The teachers will be here, so they're already here. Yeah. Um, so I would be happy to, uh, uh, along with Linda, answer any questions you had with respect uh, to any of this or with respect to any of the warrants. Yeah. Let me open up the questions, anyway. Luke. So, with regard to, um, there's a couple. Of areas that just percentage of expenditure so far jumps out ahead of what happened last year. And the first one was we have already had 88% of dues and fees versus last year, 26% this time. That's a timing issue. So it just happens to be when somebody out there fills this. I mean, these aren't big dollars, but it's just struck yeah. as No, it, it has to do with when those kind of bills come in. And then security is roughly double, in fact, more than double where we were last year. Uh, now that could also be just a function of finishing or getting out ahead of projects? Yeah. So is there any reason to suspect that won't be on track? I no. mean, it's early still. No. 
It'll be on track. Um, we actually lowered the budget on the security line, so it's going to throw the percentages uh, off between the two years. Okay. Um, that, that line should be the same budget. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, upkeep of building and grounds were 70 percent expended and encumbered. Could you explain that so early in the year, or the pretty much did conferences. all the big projects? Last year it was 67. Yeah, you do it at the beginning of the year. A lot of it is the annual testing and um, inspections and services that we have to do that are encumbered already. I see. Um, and they think that be some of them are done quarterly throughout the year, some of them are done annually. So a lot of it is just the annual maintenance of and testing that's required in the buildings. Okay. All right. I, had, uh, I mentioned earlier there'd be some questions around tuition, and I know that uh, the increase is due to timing of payments, but I'm a little concerned that at this point, two months into the year, and I know this is a 12-month cycle for, uh, for, for tuition, but we're at about 30 percent expended. Um, is that because people are billing us significantly in advance, or... And I know you said there are, there are, what, two less students than we had last year at this time? Well, I think that there's a couple of things going on. Uh, one, uh, I, I think major impact uh, on these percentages is that um, some of the schools have changed the way they're billing us. Uh, some were billing monthly, and uh, I believe we've got one that went to an annual billing, okay. and some yeah. that have I gone to that. semi-annual okay. billings. Yeah. And it's not just us. I mean, I think they're doing that across the board. Um, and so I, we had a very extensive discussion about this at the, at the uh, Board of Ed meeting. Right. And uh, I'm convinced that right now, uh, this does not indicate that the tuition line is going to be over budget. Okay. Well, you raise a point uh, that I think could use a bit of clarification when you, there are two items particularly that are rather significant items in here, one for 135000 another for 27000 mm -hmm. And uh, it does say one tuition, mm -hmm. but is that an annual tuition in both cases, or is that Monthly, no. if, if it's if it's no, going it's to be not more monthly. Than, I can tell yeah. you that. Well, uh, so. the twenty-seven thousand. Oh, the twenty-seven thousand. Is that a semester or? Yeah. The hundred thirty-five thousand. The hundred thirty-five thousand is one student, and that is an annual tuition. The twenty-seven thousand, I believe, is a monthly for one student. Yeah. Yes, that is a monthly for one student, and that is a full year program, not a 10 month school year program. Okay. I think that's a residential. It's a residential. It's a residential. It's a, residential. It's a, residential. It's a full year. Yeah. Okay, so in both cases they're annual. No, one is a... One's only monthly, one's monthly. but it is a program that runs all well, I think so it would help 12. us if, if they were done on the same basis. You know, well, that's least, how they At least a note, yeah. but at least a note put in there is something to give us an idea of what, it, what the uh, well, we course may be in. We could indicate whether things are monthly or well, semi That's why we put July 2016, so that was that the charge for just July, July 2016 for one student. We, on, we only have a limited amount of space that we can put in a description, so we thought that by putting the month that the tuition was for and the number of students in there, that it would try and right. build it clearer. And, okay. and, 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 to your, and to your defense, it is the 135,000 says 2016, 2017, one tuition. That's correct. Uh, I read that as an annual number. Mm -hmm. uh, the other so, one said, did say July 16th. Right, and then yeah. the, the one couple above it, uh, 49,000, summer 2016, six tuitions. So I think, I think okay. some of it's there. Okay. It's there. You know? Okay. So I didn't Can't. have any questions, but now this is spurring one little one. So our, our budget this year is $2.4 million, right. which is basically what it was last year for tuition. It's, it's actually 18000 more this year. Our budget this year is two four one two, and last year it was two three nine four. so it's 18000 more. But we have two or three fewer outplaced students. 
did the tuition go up by that much for each person? That's over five percent. No, I think what am I, I am think I'm doing something for thinking about no, it correctly. I, I, yeah, because it, it, the different schools have radically different costs. The residential programs tend to be in the area of 300000 a year. Some of the day school programs are much more reasonable. So, so, are we, do you, so are if you have somebody who shifts from, because of the, the condition of the student, if you have some uh, student who shifts from a school where it was costing us Fifty or sixty thousand to somebody to another school that's going to cost us a hundred or hundred and twenty, because that's what it's going to take to, because of the current status of that student. Right, that may not be the same cohort of students. We may have had students who are graduating out because they are twenty-one and older. We may have had students who have graduated out because they have earned their high school diploma, and we have other students who are coming into that count. Um, either youngsters joining us or students who have had new needs identified. So yes, there will be some annual increase built into that, but it's also a different cohort of students who may have different needs, who may have had increasing services provided from the last year's um, budget, or maybe in wholly different schools from last year's budget. And Linda, could you refresh my memory as to how you go about s setting that number? Isn't it, don't you do something where you take the currently enrolled students that we had mm -hmm. back in January? Right. Enrollment. Enrollment. And we take that number, those students, and the associated costs that we know are going to be in the system. Is that right. the way you do it? We look at, we look at who's graduating out, right. um, look who's coming off, look who might be coming back into district, and look for those students that maybe have the potential to be outplaced. But we also have to factor in what the um, excess cost grant rate be, is going to be. Right. So we have to pay up to a certain dollar amount before the excess cost grant will, is supposed to cover the remaining tuition. That changes every year because it's based on our per pupil expenditure times, depending on whether it's a DCF place or um, a locally placed student, that factor always changes. So every year that goes up on how much we have to pay from the first dollar for every outplaced student. It was 74000 last year. This year, I don't know exactly what that number is yet. But it's so, more. But yeah, so we're, we're try, we have to try to factor in that that's going to go up and pay, and that we're going to have to pay that first $75,000, $76,000, whatever it is, for each outplacement. And then the excess cost grant is supposed to come in, and we don't get the full 100% of the excess cost grant. So is that 74000 um, constant across all towns or across our dirt? No, it's How based, on, it's based, it based on, on our per, per, pu per uh, pupil expenditures. Four and a half times your per, per pupil, pupil expenditure, expenditure is the amount that the state expects you to pay before they begin providing excess cost relief. And the excess cost relief never comes in at 100% of of in what's beyond four and a half times comes your expenditure. In CAPS every year has been lobbying to reduce the number to three and a half times your per pupil expenditure. But it's based on our local expenditures that are calculated and then and that's what they apply. And then each year we never anticipate to receive 100% of what we're due um, because the state's not obligated to meet that expenditure. They meet that expenditure um, resources being available. And so we generally receive 70, 75 percent of what we're owed. Mm -hmm. We don't receive the full 100 percent. But the Superior Court judge just ordered the legislature to fix it in 180 days, right? Mm -hmm. Come up with a plan in 180 days to correct that. All right. it's, <laughs> it's, it's also worth cautioning the board, if I may. Um, in past years, when we have had special education overruns because of unanticipated tuition needs, we have been able to absorb those cost overruns in our regular operating budget in large part due to um, a balance that we have been able to generate each summer within our salary line. We, we have teachers who retire every year, we hire at a lower salary rate, and we've always been able to use that cost to offset. So 
while I agree with Mr. Sands, there's nothing here to show us today that we expect to go over budget intuition. Should there be changing needs, because students, students have emerging needs or new students move into town, um, remember that we reduced that salary line by approximately $250,000 at the end of this past budget season, taking, taking advantage of the retirements and the rehires at a lower level in advance. And so that ability to absorb special education overruns is going to be more limited this year than it ever has been in past years. Um, and again, I will caution this board every opportunity I get to that. I hope that that is not a need that we experience this year, um, but I, I do want to bring it to your attention tonight. Understood. Because just so everybody understands, if we can't say, well, we've run out of money, we, we still have to provide the education to the right. student. Right. That's exactly right. If students have special education needs that are identified, we are obligated to meet those needs and expend that they, cost. They've got a we can't refuse to PDI provide that service. That's got right. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions? I have something for the one day. Especially with the board, and I appreciate the analysis. Really, but this is probably more just. Um, uh, an accounting question than, than an actual expense question, but there's a series, starting on page four, there's a series of small purchases from- We're so talking about, about the warrants, warrants now? The warrants. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. okay, I'm sorry. Let's go to the warrants then. So starting on page four. Uh, so it looks like it must have been work over the summer, is what I'm guessing, but like, yeah, Hampton, Zimmerman, Landon, Lumber, Page Hardware, uh, Company Lowe's, and I'm just kind of curious why those all show up as individual purchases rather than some sort of lump purchase, and why whatever's happening doesn't get negotiated at one point. Well, well, let me take a crack at that, and then we'll have Linda do it. I mean, the reason you're seeing so much of that is that we do almost all of repair work in the summer. Yeah. And we have all these lists of what we're going to do at this school, what we're going to do at that school. And like, Hampton Zimmerman is the electric supply company we use. And so if we're fixing some electrical system, they're going to go there. Um, it, you'll see that they, you know, these, these are just individual transactions. And, and My point. I mean, somebody doesn't sort of say, okay, for the next month, here's what we're going to do. Let's figure out what we need and make one trip to the store. I mean, it just it seems odd. I, I don't know because I think that the, Often when the when the guys are in there working on it, yeah. they'll discover that they need something else, or you know, I mean, it, it they they do get some of it in advance, but I think once they open up the wall and, and figure out what's really there, they it, it can they can need more. Just ask Roger at Pages. I go back three or four times for this project. <laughs> <one Sunday, right? laughs> I mean, I. I've been to Zimmerman three times in a day trying to get some of the things what fixed. Did you forget now is Roger's favorite one. But it's a good question. Yeah. That we go into the store twice. Yeah. Sometimes it's just the store it's a different kind of homeowner and, and what I'm presuming yeah. are essentially pros doing right. what they're supposed to be doing. It just seems like it's not the most efficient method. Right? Agreed. Okay. I have a question uh, um, in the, uh, the, the summary of the uh, Operations Committee, uh, this was on the 8th of August, uh, those transfers that occurred, I just wondered what we lost or whether it was laid over uh, to the current year's budget, but uh, you moved in order to meet the sick time pay obligation for teachers, you moved uh, 45000 out of purchase services and 15000 out of supplies and materials. And, mm -hmm. um, how critical were those losses, or were they, I mean, were, what did we lose, if anything, over there, or was it reapplied to this current year? I mean, are there any well, purchase services that we decided not to get, and no. supplies and materials no. that we decided were not important? Or? Go ahead, no, this, we this, had, this gets complicated. We had, um, well, for a good part of the year, we it's had a- title a, of a movie. It's complicated. We had a, a freeze on, on spending, so there was restrictions placed on items unless they were essential for running a classroom program or curriculum. 
Um, so these items, these funds that were available were funds that were there because of the freeze. I can't tell you specifically, well, maybe we didn't spend $1,000 here, we did it this year, um, but in order to cover those, that commitment for the retirement sick pay for the teachers that were retiring, we had to pay those out and we had to cover them from somewhere. Because it was either that or come back and ask for money and we weren't coming back and asking for money. I have a larger question on that. Uh, there were 320,000 in uh, payments made for unused sick time. Um, Actually, the it, total was almost was 380. Eight, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. That was 320 out of current operating budget, and it said you leave a balance for this item of 60,000 to be covered in the new fiscal year. Right. So you're borrowing against it. You're taking 60,000 out of this year. What was your budgeted allocation for unused sick time? I'm, my assumption is, is that over time we're decreasing that because of some of the contracts have eliminated the amount right. of time well, yeah. they can they can right, right. um the budget was oh, i believe one hundred seventy five thousand dollars last year right um and we had three hundred total of three hundred eighty thousand dollars the year before we had four teachers retire right this year we had 12. 12 so yeah. we never quite know exactly how many are going to retire gotcha there is a sunset on that clause there's right. only the benefit does not Certainly. exist for anyone hired after 1998. That's what I. That's what I thought. Yeah. Do we happen to know what our anticipated or what our liability is for those? Well, it's difficult to say because they can continue to accumulate sick that's, time. Right? That's the well, problem. No, that's the problem. The, doing no, the, because there's a max on it. They can only accumulate huh? half of their unused sick days up to 70 days. Okay. For a teacher. So we could put a finger on that and say, uh, you know. We anticipate another I, I half have, a million dollars. I don't, the remember the, years, right? I don't remember the count off, t off the top of my head, but I do have that information. I could tell you the yeah. number of teachers yeah. that are still eligible we, for that. We could calculate the total exposure, and right. then you know every year we wouldn't know how much of it comes due in any given year. Yeah, but we right. should be able to calculate the total exposure left at this time. It'll be helpful in years. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I, I have it. I just don't remember off the top of my head what it was. It's true. The new numbers will be out with the audit, but that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that won't be here until December. -ish. But I've already prepared the schedule for I the auditors. Your schedule's already there. Yeah, the audit, I had the auditors in last week, two weeks ago, already. Good. So they've already come through. Do you have to train a new one again or not? <laughs> no. Or is it the same team? Same team. Same team. Well, okay. pretty much. One new one. <laughs> Anything else? I had a question under, under capital. Um, the site improvements and the equipment instructional uh, it, it's down from what the percentage of expended and encumbered was last year. This is going back to the, uh, oh, the sheet. Is that a timing uh, a function of timing, or is that? I'm sorry, which category was that? I'm in, under capital, equipment, yeah. instructional, non-instructional, oh, yeah. and site improvements. The equipment instructional um, is, usually most of those purchases are from the technology lease. Right. And because the lease we couldn't do the lease until after the budget had passed, so we were late on the lease, so we didn't have a lease in place until August 1st, where last year we had it in place in July 1st, so he couldn't purchase anything for that line item until after August 1st. So it is kind of a timing. It is a timing. Okay. It was a long answer to just say timing. Okay. Perfect. No, no, I'm glad you clarified that. Thank you. Others? Actually, I do have a question. Okay. August 8th, Board of Education meeting. Um, actually, there was some mention in, of this in another, uh, the other meeting minutes, I think. Um, there was something about a, a, a trust. Yes. And I was just curious where that property was. Is that something that can be disclosed? I don't know. There, there was something about a resolution for the superintendent to sign in regards oh, yeah. to a trust? It's, for, it's to be used for scholarship. It's to be used it's for scholarship. scholarship okay. fund. Um, yeah. So it was the Landorf Trust, um, and we received the funds um, from that trust, okay. um, over $82,000, oh, to be used okay. for scholarships um, at the discretion of, of the committee, the, the scholarship the committee. Scholarship. So we, I, I've met with um, the high school, and we've talked about setting some guidelines and, and trying to determine what amount is going to be given for that scholarship and I'm 
discussing with the bank how to best in, best invest that money um, so that we can keep that scholarship going for a while. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's good news. Um, I just had a quick question uh, on the uh, you mentioned the uh, <coughs> the um, enrollment, kindergarten enrollment. Any changes since then? We had 196 as of August 8th. Did that okay. that number Paul's move? Paul's going to speak to enrollment. You're going to speak to that in it. Okay, fine. When he comes up. Good. I don't want to steal his thunder. Mm. <laughs> you already know the number. Okay. Anything else? Hearing none. Is there a uh, hearing none? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to accept the report of expenditures for the Board of Education for August 2016? It's been moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Great. Item five. Review and approve the report of expenditures. Superintendent. Oh, Superintendent. I'm sorry. That's right. I'm sorry. Well, we already got the answer I needed, so. That's all you cared about. Gave it to me. <laughs> Thank you very much for offering the time. Um, I have tried to join you each year at your September meeting. I just wanted to continue that tradition tonight, just take a few minutes and let you all know that we have had a very successful opening to school this year. Um, you talked a little bit about facilities. All of our facilities were um, ready to open on the first day for students and staff this year. Uh, we have no buildings with um, incomplete window walls or security systems. Everything was ready to open this summer as we returned. Staff members came back for two full days of professional development uh, in mid-August. Mid Students retain, uh, return, returned on the heels of that. We are into our fourth week of school. Um, I did want to update you on enrollment, uh, particularly kindergarten. Um, as of today, we have 3,398 students enrolled. Um, that is above the projections. We were looking at a projected enrollment this year of 3,213. That means we do continue to experience enrollment declines, but at a much slower rate than we had expected. Um, these are only preliminary enrollment figures. We don't take our official enrollment until October 1st. That's what we report to the state as official. Uh, in kindergarten today, we have 193 students enrolled in our kindergarten classes. We were projected in the same study to have 167 kindergarten students. So kindergarten is rebounding, and it's rebounding more quickly than anticipated. Last year, however, we had 221 kindergartens and, uh, kindergarten students enrolled. So it is lower than last year's figure. It is not as low as we were projected. Um, we were concerned again this summer about where kindergarten enrollment would land. Uh, we have not put any additional staff members in place. So as of today, we do not have any unfunded staffing positions in this budget. Now this time last year, I was sharing with you that over the summer we were forced to hire two additional teaching positions to maintain class sizes, and those were unbudgeted. At this time, we have no unbudgeted staffing positions, and so that is very much good news. Um, I also wanted to share with you that this year uh, we uh, changed bus routing in the town. We changed, we changed bus routing as a result of some recommendations we received from an outside consultant. Uh, we worked with three priorities as we looked at our bus routes this year. Uh, first, uh, safety maintained our primary concern. We wanted to make sure that any changes maintained the level of safety that we expect here in town. But we also looked at being more nimble in our bus routing. Um, bus stops that may have been established for years in a neighborhood have changed as a result of meeting the door-to-door -door expectations for kindergartners, but moving the stop to meet that need rather than adding a stop because there happens to be a kindergartner in a specific neighborhood. Um, Additionally, we worked just to make the routes more efficient. We were very sensitive to feedback that we received over the last couple of years, um, that buses were stopping very frequently, that buses never appeared to be running full. Um, and so in many instances, instead of pulling into every cul-de-sac off of a main artery, we're now stopping at the intersections of cul-de-sacs and main arteries and asking students from that cul-de-sac to walk out and meet the bus. Um, this is a first step approach, but we are working to run a more efficient busing system and recognize efficiencies, safe efficiencies, wherever possible. 
Um, I will note that even though these were modest changes based on what the consultants recommended, um, we put a system in place. We wanted to be responsive to concerns. We've received over 150 requests to review those changes that have been made. So at this time, Mr. Dorwin and Mr. Bowden have logged more than 200 miles going out to look at bus stops, to meet with parents, and to be really thoughtful about where we're asking our students to meet the buses and about the safety and the perception of safety on the part of the parents. And so while we made significant changes early on in the process and we were initially projecting being able to take two buses off the road this year, uh, we have given back on some of those. We have revised some of those changes. So at this point, while we do project to see some shorter bus runs, parents stood up at our last Board of Education meeting and noted that their, parent, their students are being picked up five or ten minutes later this year than they were last year. So reducing the time on the bus is an, an innate good, uh, but we also do uh, project to generate some modest savings uh, in gas. We have put those two buses back on the road in response to parental concerns that have been raised this year. But we have maintained many of the changed stops, particularly those around the cul-de-sacs that I noted. Um, and we're going to continue to work on this as we get better with the software that we're using, as Mr. Dorwin becomes more experienced as our transportation coordinator. Uh, we expect each year to continue to strive for more efficiency. And there was a letter shared with our community today about the bus stop processes and results, and that's posted on our website uh, if you're interested in that. I also want to share with you, though, what we shared with the board last week. Um, so we've opened school, we're back to school, things are going well, and over the summer we also received the results from last year's standardized assessments. Um, so just last Monday night we shared with the Board of Education our results on the Smarter Balanced Assessment, the new annual summative assessment that we take. Um, while we spent much time cautioning the board that one measure is never a complete way to look at our performance, and while we very much cautioned our board about using comparative measures, looking at how we perform compared to other school districts, I do, however, want to share with you that when you look at Guilford Public Schools and the rest of Derg B, 21 communities that have um, demographically the most similar profiles to Guilford, on the English Language Arts Assessment, third graders through eighth graders in Guilford performed um, at the top of the DERG. We are the number one performing school district in DERG B in terms of English language arts performance. We're tied for the number one position, but we're at the very top of the DERG. And in mathematics performance, we rank seventh out of 21 similar districts. We're very pleased with what that tells us. What that tells us is that we're making good decisions, um, that our teachers are doing good work in the classroom, that the community continues to support the work of their children in the schools, um, it's only one measure, but that measure tells us that we're making the right decisions. Mr. Bloss would tell you that if you looked at Guilford demographically, we should rank at the very bottom of Derg B. Um, if you just look at financial measures, um, we would be 20th, 21st, 22nd in our Derg. But when you look at simply one academic measure, we're performing very much at the top of the DERG. Uh, we're very proud of that and wanted to share those results with you here tonight. Uh, it's been a very good opening. We're looking forward to a very successful school year. By financial measures, do you mean uh, cost per pupil or? No, the DERG really looks at, uh, it looks at income per capita, it looks at household, um, you know, household income, it looks at, how, at the value of the homes and the properties in town. Um, when you look at Guilford from those demographic measures, um, we're not pushing to, to leave Derg B and be recognized as Derg A. Um, we're sort of in the, at the bottom end of Derg B when you look at those measures, per capita income, value of home, value of property. Um, but when you look at our performance, we're very much at the top. Our per student expenditures would be considered average for the state. Um, we expend just about at the 80th um, we would rank about 80th in the state on what we spend. Um, I don't have the results in front of me, but I know that when you look at our performance statewide, not just in our DERG, I believe for English language arts, we performed about eighth highest in the entire state. That's including the DERG A communities. And when you look at our math performance, we perform about 18th in the state when you include those DERG A communities into that mix. That means we're actually outperforming some of those communities as well. Can I ask a quick question? I know we've had coaches 
Anyway, we all hate that term. Instructional coaches. Yeah, instructional coaches for English for how long now? Nine years. So uh, I made the observation to the board uh, Monday night. Um, we have had instructional coaches working in the buildings on the ground with teachers around their English language arts instruction for nine years now. Um, and that would be referred to as embedded daily professional development. While we have been focusing on our math performance in the last several years, we have uh, renewed our math curriculum. We have uh, purchased a new K through five math um, resource uh, material. It's not a program, but the resources we use in the classroom. And we have brought in one math coach who is now trying to support teachers in all of our teachers K through eight. Last year's initial budget, as prepared by me and approved by the Board of Education, included a part-time math coach in each of our four elementary schools. Looking at these results, while we know we've made good choices, I think you see the impact of those embedded instructional coaches in English language arts. Um, and I noted for the board already that as we begin this year's budget work, we need to revisit the discussion of math coaches so that we can see that kind of improvement in mathematics as well. You had a uh, two-day administrative retreat. It was, you uh, just noted it briefly in your, in your report. I wondered what the greatest challenge was that you folks came out with. Uh, the, what do you have to do? The, the challenge for us in Guilford is, um, it, it, and I think one of the terms that comes out of it, the most recent research, is around um, focus and coherence. The challenge for us in Guilford is continuing to make improvement when you are already a high performing school district and not resting on your laurels or not undercutting the resources that have led to the successes that you've, you've recognized. The other piece is maintaining coherence. Um, in a community like Guilford, where we're surrounded by university, where we have um, an engaged community who wants good work happening, and in a current environment in education where we're being pulled in a hundred different directions all at one time, it's about maintaining your focus and being sure that the few things you're working on fit together neatly. And so when we worked at our administrative retreat, we looked really specifically at our professional practice. So how do we support the teachers in the classroom and support them as professionals? We looked at our pedagogical practice. Instructionally, what do we expect to do in the classroom every day? And what do the teachers do with students in the classroom every single day? And then we looked at the content component, our curriculum renewal. We've renewed English language arts. We've renewed math. Uh, the Board of Education just at their last meeting approved a renewed social studies curriculum and we're beginning work on our science curriculum. And we're launching a, a community-wide conversation about homework and the importance of homework, uh, the purpose and importance of homework moving forward this year. So when you're trying to balance your professional practice, your instruction, and the importance of the content that we bring into the classroom, how do you do that and not dilute the work and not allow it to fracture or fall apart? Um, and so in our administrative retreat, um, we had Dr. Liz City. She is the director of the Graduate School of Education for Harvard University come and spend one of those two days with us and help us work on that coherence, making sure that the parts fit together and that the parts create a unified whole because as the leadership, you need to be able to articulate and speak to that whole if the teachers and the community are going to recognize it and be able to support your work moving forward. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Congratulations on first and seventh. Thanks. You said a new smarter balance test. Is this the first year that this test, these numbers are out so we can't compare them with last year or two years ago? Is that correct? This is the second year of the formal administration. Uh, we had a year of uh, field testing prior to that. So actually more important than the geographic comparisons. Thank you for asking me. It's not a trend yet, but compared this year to last year's administration, we have seen each rough cohort, so last year's third grade moving to fourth graders, this past, well, two years ago there were third graders, this last year there were fourth graders. When we look at all of those cohorts, and we can only do rough cohort comparison at this time, all of those cohorts performed better a year later than they did a year prior, and in almost every single instance, year to year, uh, grade level growth, which is a very rough comparison because it's not the same students, 
but almost to the individual grade level. Every grade performed better year over year, and every cohort performed better as we followed them through the grade cycle. So we're just pleased overall. Students are moving in the right direction. Uh, teachers at their grade levels are moving in the right direction. And when you compare us to our cohort, uh, which is the only real comparison we can make now, um, we're doing well as well. As we get a third, fourth, fifth year behind us, we will be able to start plotting trend lines and see if we're moving in the directions and at the pace that we want to be moving. So on a grander scale, we can't say that we were first this year, but two years ago we were seventh or eighth in language arts or in math. We've gone from 10th to 7th. So, so again, with great caution, while <laughs> I said um, uh, statewide, we were 8th and 18th this year. Yeah. Last year, we were, I believe it was 12th and 20th. So again, by any measure, we have been moving in the right direction. We are just really cautious about these measures. Um, you know, you would have to pair that with all of the other measures like our attendance, uh, discipline rates, college placements, um, graduation rates, when you put all of those together, um, we, we also perform really, really well. But it's easy to put a number out. And so while I'm cautious about those numbers, we are excited and did want to share them with you. And uh, any way you look at them, we did well. Uh, you mentioned the other, I think at the meeting the other night, with regard to the high school, there were 140 enrollments with only 100 withdrawals. And I'm curious, does that mean, obviously if there are two people enrolling, I'm trying to get a sense of whether we have household growth. So we've talked right. about full day kindergarten, we've talked about the new high school right. being draws to Guilford and perhaps stemming the decline in overall student enrollment. Um, and you seem, I think you thought it was unusual that we got the 100, 140 enrollment, though you talk about it versus 100 withdrawals, but I'm having a tr trouble matching that with the 298th graders at the end of the last year versus the 296 you usually experience a drop off from the eighth because people go to private school Schools. in ninth grade right that was so that was district it went up by, by six as opposed to going down so right. can you just talk about the the 140 enrollment the 100 withdrawal and then the so the six more than you anticipated the freshman class. So those figures that you're citing are district-wide figures, and that's just a measure of summer activity. So from the last day of school, as we closed out um, in, the, in the spring, to um, the first day of school here in the fall, uh, we had uh, 100 students moved out of town and withdrew, but 140 students enrolled. Now, some of those would have been late kindergarten enrollments, but some of those are enrollments spread across other grades, including but not limited to the high school. That's not strictly a high school figure. That is district-wide activity. So over the summer, we saw a net increase of 40 students come in across 13 grade levels. Um, this improvement that you're describing as like the entire bell curve of the school from the highest performing students to the bulk in the middle and then you know some students who maybe struggle year in and maybe maybe not so much in other years. Is that entire curve moving or is it changing shape if you know what I'm saying? I mean are the are the, are the, are the students who are maybe not traditionally performing so well also improving or are we getting that gain by the higher performing students? Um we're still unpacking those numbers. So again, if you're just looking at those smarter balanced scores, um, I'm sharing with you today only the highest level of that information. So a week ago tonight in our Board of Education meeting, we shared that high level overview with the Board of Education. Um, at our workshop meeting coming up next week, we'll be diving deeper into those figures and into those data and we'll be looking more closely at measures like that. As I have been meeting with each principal at the beginning of this school year and as each principal is meeting with his and her teaching staff, they're looking down at the, the data at that level as well. Um, we are concerned about whether or not our special education students are making gains as quickly as our other students, and we're always looking at that achievement gap. Uh, we're always looking at our at-risk students, our students with special needs, um, students who are on free and reduced lunch, and that's something that every principal is looking at in his or her building individually. It's something that each teacher can look at because each teacher can look and see 
his or her students from last year and how those students performed. And as we follow the cohorts, that information moves up literally with names on it. So as a group moves from third to fourth grade, that fourth grade teacher can look back and see how each of her students performed last year. Um, broadly, I don't know that I can answer that question specifically, but it's important information and we look at it for two reasons. It allows us to look at individual student needs, probably three reasons. It allows us to look at student needs and target those students that need additional support. It allows us to look at um, subgroups within our, our school and in, in Guilford in our population the, the biggest and most significant subgroups are going to be students with special education needs and students who receive free or reduced lunch support. Um, and then broadly it allows us to look from a curricular instructional perspective and, and make observations like we did. Why, why is there a disparity between English language arts performance and math performance. What are we doing differently that could account for that? And should we make instructional or staffing or curricular changes that, that would help to close those gaps? And so that's what these bit large tests allow us to do. I continue to, to agree with the people who, who, who note that these tests don't help us. Um, by slapping a label on a school and identifying schools that are failing compared to schools that are succeeding. And I don't believe that these tests are really beneficial in the, in the area of supervising or evaluating teachers. I continue to believe that we should separate these test scores from the evaluation of teachers, even though currently the state requires us to do so. And we do it thoughtfully and carefully without, without overemphasizing the importance of one measure. But over years, particularly as we get four or five years behind us, this large end of the year um, test will allow us to begin to draw trend lines. And you can look at math versus English language arts and see are we closing that gap or is it widening? And we can ask really thoughtful questions about why. We could look at grade levels. We could look at individual teachers' classes and make some make some thoughtful inquiries based on that rather than saying you're a good teacher and you're not and this is a good school and that's not. That's not the way these tests were ever intended to be used. Is there any reason, I'm sure it's, I know it's premature, but is there any reason to think that based on your mini clustering of the buses right now that if and when we go to later start times that it's going to have a and the, the effect of reducing the initial estimate of the cost of the busing. Are you, is there any data you can glean thus far? Um, I, I wouldn't call it data, but I would call it impression. Um, our, our bus routes have been established and fairly static for a significant period of time. And in fact, I think if any change has been made uh, in the last 10 years, it's been to add more stops to those routes. I think the first thing that we recognized when we made the changes this year um, is that it is an important um, and emotional topic for, for community members. Uh, I think that we recognized that it's not something that we can change broadly and, and significantly overnight, that it is something that requires um, conversation and dialogue and trial and open-mindedness and change over year. I think as people become more comfortable um, with stops that bring people out to the main arteries in the community, but not standing in the middle of the main artery. It's the, the bus stops the traffic and then you, you board the bus. As people begin to recognize that the stop you have when your child is in kindergarten isn't necessarily going to be the same stop for the next 13 years, that stops do have to be fluid, I think we'll be able to generate better efficiencies moving forward. Taking two buses off the road would have been a significant um, it would have generated significant capacity. It would have helped to reduce the impact of a change to start times moving forward. We didn't recognize that this year, but I think we can continue to work in that direction. And yes, I think that by being more efficient with the bus routing, we could reduce the impact of some future change that, that is precipitated by changing start times. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you very much for the time. I appreciate it. I'll see you again next September. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sooner. <laughs> Item five, review and approve report of expenditures for the town government for August 2016. Linda.
think it's I think it's this side of the table that's been. Uh, well, I'll be brief. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah. Um, where would you like me to begin? Well, let's uh, let me start with revenue. I think it's probably a pretty good spot. Yeah, I'm way I'm way out of line again. We huh? sent out um, two updated schedules, and I ran some copies because I wanted to make sure that you all got the updated. Okay. Um, so we're two months of the way through. Actually, we're in the middle of the third month, and um, as one would expect, the significant I'm on revenues. The significant number of uh, dollar amounts are coming in through the tax collector's office. Uh, right now, at the end of the month, we're at about close to 53%. Um, last year, I noticed it was at 54%. I really have no explanation or knowledge as to why there's a change. Um, and the rest of this is what I would say typical revenues that are coming in. State revenues, uh, it's a little too early for some of these to be coming in at this point. Um, and right now, um, you know, <laughs> My my guess is is that is this early in the year it's very difficult to make a, a an educated guess but I don't think you're going to have a revenue problem at the end of the year. Let's put it that way. Particularly if the taxes continue to come in at come this in. level. We may have a minor shortage in the state of Connecticut, the uh, non board of education stuff, because we had established our budget prior to. But some of those funds. cuts are small. Yeah, they, some they of the other. Bad. It's we're not, we're we're, going to, we're talking about less than fifty thousand. Well, you should be okay, I think, because by the time the third referendum went through, assuming all the the changes were caught, right. you should have been able to catch most of them. Well, and what but we, I'm not positive. Right. What uh, what we did was we adjusted the grand list to accommodate for some okay. of the stuff. So it's gonna we're, we're going to be a little short on the state stuff. We know. Well, that. there's one other. But we'll be higher on our tax collection rate. We'll, well but I think there's one caveat that you need to yeah. be aware of because at this point in time, a year ago, um, I don't think the state had really started to make cuts and then subsequently made two sets of cuts. Cuts, right? So they've already. Um, I'm involved with the uh, with the state uh, commission and. Um, we we had to give back a certain amount, and we've already been told that we have to give back a certain amount more in the fiscal year is two months old. Right. So the reality is the municipal aid isn't going to be exempt. Okay. So, um, but that's an issue that's going to have all kinds of other right. ramifications. Right. So that's where we. Does anybody have any questions, questions on, on the revenues uh, at this point? Mike. Yeah, I think we probably all saw fire. <laughs> Um, the fire line item, not we didn't see fire. Oh, I was going to um, say, did I miss something? <laughs> there, there was there was one at the end of my street. Uh, in revenues? Um, it, it, well, just the, the revenues in August, uh, July, there was nothing, and then forty in, uh, in oh. August. It just seems that the fire line, fire department line, is very very the low compared the to what we're used to seeing. Yeah. But that's the ambulance, monthly. and it's also the way you bill and the pay, and, and the way the and, see, pay. and we're always told it's, it's usually a month years. behind. Because there's but. there's a receivable that's that's booked up against last year, so there's a lag time when you're dealing with any of the health care providers. Good. Any other questions? Okay, on expenditures, um, again, you know, you're two months of two, this report is a little two months into the year, and it's we're, we're um, it's it's really tough to say because where I think you're going to be and where you are. Because I'll, I'll be candid, I've been spending more time focusing on the audit-related stuff, so I really haven't studied everything here. <laughs> Quite honestly, there's nothing that jumped out on expenditures. No. Um, assume, you know, once, once you get done with the conferences. So. Well, and you're high-end loaded on your debt at the upfront of the year anyway, yes, so you've got some significant expenditures right yeah. now. I'm not sure if you, again, the details of the right. Natural resources seem to be a little bit higher, trending high. Um, I also understand, I believe there's been more tree work yeah. 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 in the community um, recently. I think Adams was the one we mentioned last week, and I'm wondering if that affected it. I know there's some other work that's being done downtown. So. I probably can't answer that. The only comment I'd make is this is the time of the year when you're going to be doing tree work, particularly right. because yeah. um, in anticipation of any storms, I know they want people out there doing things, assuming these are the people that are doing some of that work. But uh, uh, the first selector could probably respond better than I could on that. Well, a specific question. Yeah. 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 And I didn't know that the report. Uh, I was looking for an article for something else you'll probably bring up. But uh, we do have some encumbrances in there, some purchase, blank purchase orders that have been issued in anticipation of more tree work to be done. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah it was, it's, uh, are we going to need more money uh, in that line this year because it's 70% expended? No, that's, no, it's no we're already provided for it. Yes, he's doing most of the work now. Yeah. Well, no, we've uncovered it. We've uncovered most of it. Yes, Other uh, questions on expenditures? Okay. Warrants? Oh. Anybody? Um, I'm not really sure, I guess. If you have you any don't questions, have? I'll try to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> we could always take the questions back. I, and that's we exactly what I was. We always take the questions back. Yeah. Right. Happy to do that. Uh, warrants or special fund weekly checks, general fund weekly checks, anything? Ken? I have just a couple quick ones. Uh, page 11 oh. on the. September 15th? Uh, yeah, that one. I'm sorry, page what? Page 11, down at the bottom, reserve high in the Wetland Commission complex application fee for 350 Goose Lane for $5,300. Um, no, is, is is no, it's it goes to Jacobson. It's a yes, study on, Duke, on Goose Lane. Jacobson is a yeah. He's a contractor that was hired by the town to do a third party engineering study for 350 Goose Lane, but that is being reimbursed to the town by the developer. Is that the Wilbur and King property? The old Wilbur and King yes, property? Correct. Then that explains why it's up front, because these are balance sheet accounts, so this is where the expense would come out of and then the reimbursement would come straight back through. Yep. Okay. Others? And why do we do that in that way as opposed to having the developer pay for it, just out of curiosity? Because the uh, town puts out the RFP or RFQ for it, and then the town selects the, uh, the engineer, and then we have the applicant pay for it. But if the applicant doesn't prevail or if the project doesn't go through, then the town pays, still for pays for it. No, they they still pay for it regardless. Yeah. Okay. This is a very common practice in, in uh, most towns now, uh, because the town wants to have some level of control over how the study is done. done. Okay. Yeah. Then on page, same document, page 48, um, perhaps it's the same thing. I don't know. It's for environmental consulting lab, bacteria testing and stormwater testing for a little over 2,000 and one for 1,300. That's coming out of, I think, a budget, a budget line item. I can get you the answer on what that is, but it appears, hmm, it looks like they could be an ongoing an ongoing issue, but I'll get you the answers on that. Yeah, I haven't, I don't recall seeing it before. Okay. Seen it before. Yep. I'm going to flip over to the other Ken while you. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Is it okay? Sorry, yeah, by all means, anybody can jump in. Okay. I have two questions on warrants. Uh, the first on the software computer page. 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 Oh, pardon me, page on the 915 set, page 13. Computer equipment for the police, the $85,000 figure, is that a, a single complete figure? Yeah, that's the uh, uh, first payment of a three-year capital lease. It's a lease payment. For the new computer system for the police department. Remember when we had to reduce our budget? Right. We had a uh, $200,000 earmarked uh, in our budget for the police computer and we reduced that budget and, uh, by uh, significantly and we decided that we would go out on the capital lease and so this year's uh, 2017's payment would be $85,000. It's the first of three. Great. Uh, another question, uh, not that we don't need the psychological consultant, but if we look at page 36, I don't see what department that's fire linked to. Police Is usually. that fire? Fire or police usually. Most likely fire. Page 36. Of which listing are you on? It's on the special weekly. Oh. General fund weekly checks. General fund weekly. Page, page 36. Are we Total talking of about 17.6. Yeah, I think we talked about this last month. This was a contractor that we have on, this was the doctor that we have on um, under contract. Youth and Family Services. For, for Youth and Family, family Services? No. Yeah, we just, we, this came up last month, too. Yes, it is Youth and Family It's the same one? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same doctor, I believe. It's physician. We have an annual contract. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes, Mike. Uh, yeah. Luke, Luke? If I could get back to the eighty-five thousand dollars for the police um, lease, uh, what what is the differential of paying that lease over three years versus the one-time purchase that we would have done, cost-wise? Because we have to lose the cut. Budget it all in one year. My my question really is: is it is it is there some interest that we're paying by by leasing this out over three years versus a one-time purchase price? Uh, yeah. very slight. Okay. Okay. I, I thought we'd actually cancel that all together. I didn't know they were, uh, I rem this no, was that we next gen it. thing or something, right? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. I reduced yeah. it. Uh, okay. It smooths the expenditures out too if you do a lease right. like this. It really evens it out. You don't take a spike yeah, in one year and then a drop the next year. But there is a lead. There is an interest payment. There is. There is there's, a, there's a cost of money. Right. I'm sure right. it's a tax exempt lease, so yeah. it, it's probably a low rate. It's built yeah. into the eighty-five thousand. Yeah. Okay. I do have um, you said you were I do. Updates, yep. updated documents. Yep. two months it's very difficult to really make a gauge particularly because when you're in the summer you know the teachers are excuse me education employees are the largest group of users and a large number of those folks do have the summer off so sometimes that's an opportunity to have med surge procedures you know and so it's possible that numbers could bow up the one thing that I think you need you need to be concerned about or alerted to is that in the first month we had no claims that exceed the se exceeded the seventy five thousand, and in this month we had several that jumped, and one of them went over the level uh, covered by the um, ISL. So and we're only in the second month. So we need to keep an eye on that. There's very little that we can do to contain that, but other than keeping an eye on it, and at some point when you look at that little box that's got a blue line on it. Right now, quote unquote, we have no savings on the premium, you know, of what we're paying for the uh, for the ISL. However, we're only into, we've only had one month worth of claims. Um, as far as the revenues are concerned, they're pretty static, you know, in terms of what we anticipate they're going to be. But right now, we are projecting at the end of um, two months a deficit of a dollar. So that was pretty good budgeting. Uh, <laughs> And the bottom uh, is dropping through. We, we do have an estimate that the um, incurred but not reported for 63016, the IBNR was a million sixty-five, um, and that brings down what we're projecting the fund balance to be at, at the end of this year at a million one fifty-seven. And now that this is set up the way you want it to be set up, before I leave, you'll have one more month, and then Mary Jane will be able to take you, you know, take you through the rest of Great, the year. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sure. Does anybody else have any other? Questions. God forbid we have to learn how to read something else. Well, you might when she comes, but you know, I'm going to give sure. you a chance. That's, that's negotiable. <laughs> that's negotiable. Joe? Mr. Chairman, uh, again, we asked about the uh, police budget. Uh, we took that out of the computer. It's in the budget for uh, the capital for $100,000. Okay. Okay. All right, so was it there for $100,000? $100,000. Yeah. Okay. Okay, building permits. Uh, we finally got June, right, June, and we've given you July and August. Excellent, thank you. Um, right, 
Thank you. And then I think, right. Oh, and the golf course. The golf course. Do you want to talk about that in conjunction with yeah, the transfers? Well, we could, yeah, we, we can certainly talk about it uh, with the transfers, but just uh, a significant drop in revenue um, so far this year. Um, very high, very significant jump in utilities uh, from, you know, again, I, I'm supposing last year's number was wrong um, at $325 uh, for uh, versus oh, yeah. ver versus uh, sixteen thousand, and I guess the question is sixteen thousand for what period? Uh, it would be this should be two months, two but months. the reality is it's probably two bills that were paid during the first month, and I'm I can't tell you tell off you. the top of my head which one those two are. Okay. Yeah. Well, nonetheless, that uh, it's that something to keep an eye on. To keep an eye on. That's right. Um, Okay. Anybody else on the golf course? We're well, supposed to be implementing some big changes this year. Yes, we'll, well, we'll be doing that water. shortly. It's, it says water, but I don't understand why. If you look at the next page, it says water. It is it water? But, does that mean we didn't water it? Last year? Last year. <laughs> it, I saw it in. It may also be the cycle of what the billing is yeah. for water. You know, it just may be, and is it Connecticut Water Company? It is Connecticut Water. They may have changed their billing cycle. Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. I, I, yeah, I agree. The only thing is, if you look at the January through August, then it doesn't make sense because the number's still off by the amount. It's 10,000 versus 23,000. So. It doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to it. Yeah, we can check into that and make sure that we're not inadvertently kept. The pond on the course was full last year, and they had the hoses to hit the site. It was, it was a wetter spring, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> Okay, um, anything else of Linda? Uh, is there a motion to approve the uh, expenditures of town government for August 2016? So moved. That's moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Recusals? None? Good. Okay, um, item six uh, discuss and take possible action on end of year transfers to close out fiscal year 2015 2016. Uh, as is a uh, normal occurrence here. Uh, prior to um, closing the books, we move uh, we move money to cover uh, departments that need that that have exceeded their uh, expenditures, their approved expenditures. Uh, and what we are looking to do is to move uh, uh, eight hundred and fifty-four thousand uh, dollars from various departments to other departments. Um, and let's just uh, walk through these uh, quickly. Uh, the, the, and I'm going to put this in a form of a motion so that we can uh, discuss and then take action on it. Um, it is uh, recommended that uh, we transfer from contingency $7,000 to finance uh, to cover the annual audit, uh, possible overage due to fire department retirement. No, finance director. Finance director, excuse me. Finance, not fire department, finance director. Um, Seventeen thousand five hundred dollars uh, from contingency to registrars of voters uh, to handle the mud, uh, multiple budget referenda. Ninety-five hundred dollars from contingency to natural resources, uh, tree maintenance and removal expenses. Um, One hundred forty thousand dollars from contingency to fire department, in addition to twenty thousand dollars from communications to fire department to cover replacement salaries due to workers' comp and uh, open uh, positions or vacancies. 185,000 uh, reserved from bond premiums to debt retirement interest. Uh, this is something that we had uh, planned on uh, two years ago, I think it was. Uh, and lastly, uh, transfers of $45,000 from police, uh, 255,000 from engineering and public works, 174,000 from employee benefits, and $1,000 from contingency to the Guilford Lakes golf course. Um, so I'm putting that in a motion. Is there a second? Um, I have a couple of quick questions. Linda, uh, mm -hmm. just as a point of clarification, uh, when we say uh, a department transfer to the Guilford Lakes golf course, are we saying to the, to the specific non-major proprietary fund? Is that how it has to read? Well, there actually is a line item in the operating budget for the Guilford Lakes. It's a transfer to item. It's a transfer to, right? So yeah. what we're doing is basically using that as the vehicle that we're going to get the money over there. So it does not have to designate to the proprietary No, it's, fund. it's to the no, course. We're saying it to the accumulated deficit. 
It's so, yeah. Okay. That's I would fine. say that it, it's to it's to extinguish the deficit. The deficit, which yeah. will fall to the audit report It'll on non-major proprietary funds. Right. Right. Now, uh, the question I have specifically is, uh, and I actually found it. I went back to uh, um, the our audit uh, from, and I think the you know, this is prior to the most current year's uh, deficit. But I think we had a deficit uh, as of uh, 6 31 2015 of 379,000 in that account. So we are proposing to move 475,000, which uh, theoretically, which not, not theoretically, it will cover that 379 plus the anticipated loss from the fiscal year 2015 2016 and an anticipated loss from 2016 2017. That is, is correct. that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and in approving this, I think what we are all recognizing is, is that this needs to go into the into the budget, uh, and the first selectman and I believe the board of selectmen has made a commitment to do that in the upcoming budget season. It's yeah, it will become an operating department and become part of the general fund. Right. And the reason we can do this and move this kind of money around uh, because it is not because the police department, engineering, public works, employee benefits all had surpluses in their account this year, uh, which will go to diminish the uh, surplus at the end of the fiscal year, uh, which would traditionally fall to fund balance. Okay. Okay. If you I'm want sorry to, to I can give you an estimate on, on what that, what the impact of all these is gonna be? Uh, these, yeah, I think we had, well, the, the total is what, um, you had, I think, 1.4 and 700,000 a month ago. We're at, we're rec after, if all these transfers are made, we expect the net result will be a million three. A million three. Million th I'm rounding. I mean, it's a million three fifty plus, but that's we're, that's the net result. And that's a million three fifty plus between uh, unexpended funds and unanticipated revenues. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Including the transfers. And th that's net, including net of the transfers. That right. includes the transfers. Right. I'm sorry to have dominated the conversation. Uh, anybody questions or? Well, I'll second that motion. If you put that, in the that, that was a motion. Right. Any uh, any other questions, comment? No. So this is the first step in the, in the transfer of the golf course yep. to to an operating, to an operating. fund. Yep. Okay. And it cleans up that little hole in the audit that doesn't yeah. look very good. So. Now we wouldn't have been able to do this without the surplus. Like this. And okay. now is the time to do it. But there's been some discussion on the board of selectmen of why, and I don't disagree with what I'm about to relate to you, is well, why don't we start establishing a capital expense reserve? And I think that's fine. But I think we've got to clean up our house a little bit before we start establishing new reserves. Agreed. And we could always do that at any point because our undesignated or unallocated fund balance, whatever the current term is, pick one, pick one um, is, is going to be significantly higher uh, as a result of the 1.3 going in. Because I think we only had a 3% operating increase in our budget, which meant we needed to put in an additional 270,000 versus uh, 1.3 to keep it at the same level. Right? Right. Okay. And this is uh, consistent with what we told the uh, credit agencies back in uh, August now. Right. Yeah, August August October. Yeah. Back in the beginning of uh, August. Good. Any other questions? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Any other questions? Uh, no, but uh, yeah, I'm joking here. You know, so Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, yeah, Joe, Joe will handle the next one. Yeah. Uh, 6A. Um, let me read to you. Uh, this morning at a uh, uh, special uh, meeting held by the Board of Selectmen, they voted unanimously to award bid number 5-1617 uh, uh, for a 25-ton capacity triaxle tag-along trailer to HP Fairfield in the amount of 24500 Subject to recommendation from Board of Finance in accordance with the April, 2000, April 21st, 2015 bond resolution. Uh, as you know, uh, these bond resolutions require 
uh, Board of Finance approval for individual, individual expenditures. So is there a motion to approve the 24500 Second. Second. Comments or questions? Anything specific we're looking for? No? Joe, you're off the hook. Um, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Um, and just as a matter of uh, note, that the uh, Board of uh, Selectmen voted unanimously to approve and recommend to the Board of Finance the end of the year transfers that we just approved. So, thank you. Unanimous on both sides. Okay, item seven, committee reports. Uh, high school building committee, I think we uh, went through that. I'm gonna, I have an action item coming out of here, which is to reach out to find out what the uh, the balance due to uh, ONG Fusco is. Turf field's on schedule. Turf field is on schedule? That's supposed to be October sometime? Um, Is that anticipated to be a playing or practice field? Is it or both? Uh, uh, both? Well, probably both. both. Probably both. Okay. okay. Right. Old business. New business. Public forum. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Is that right? All in favor? Aye. 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 Blue, the Eagles are ahead. I bet. I bet the Eagles are ahead. I haven't checked yet. <laughs> um, I still have one covered in the most jet lag.